Well, good morning, Trinity friends, and welcome to our adult forum this morning. We continue in our series uh, on the baptismal covenant, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Uh, if you've been watching along with us these past few weeks, you'll know that we have had a number of our staff ministers uh, with us to talk about baptism and the baptismal covenant. We've talked with Scott White, our rector. We've talked with our deacon, Tim Ervelina. We've talked with Dina Whalen, the Vicar of Church of the Advocate, and last week we talked with Debbie Cox, our Director of, of Youth Ministries and Parish Life. And, and today I'm so pleased that we have another one of our ministers, uh, Beth Chestnut, who is our Director of uh, Family and Children's Ministries here at Trinity. Uh, Y'all know Beth so well, you, she really doesn't need an introduction, uh, but we're going to introduce her anyway. So Beth, thank you so much for, for being with us and taking the time to, to talk about baptism today. Um very pleased and honored to talk about baptism and anything else you want to talk about. <laughs> well, you know, one of the reasons why I particularly wanted to talk to you is because you're actually involved in every single baptism of a, of a, of a child here at Trinity. And, and I don't know if everybody knows that. So before we really dive into the question, I would love to hear you talk a little bit about your role in baptism here at Trinity. Uh, and also what that's meant to you and to the families you've walked with in this, in this really fundamental sacrament of our church. Yeah, this is something that we started doing, I guess it's been maybe two years now. Um, I was inspired from a conference that I went to about doing this, but in Godly Play, we have sacred stories, we have parables, but we also have liturgical stories that are about the different liturgies in our church. So there's a story called Holy Baptism. And we usually tell it in the classroom when, when we know it's a baptism Sunday. But what we started doing is that when either you or Scott are gonna meet with the families uh, the Saturday before that Sunday that their child's gonna be baptized, they have a, a time of uh, listening, y'all talking about what's gonna happen that day and procedure and all of that. But before that begins, I gather them around and we sit on the floor in the nave and I bring out the story and I tell it to them just the way I tell it to the children. Um, it's a beautiful, simple story where you're lying, laying down these white circles and saying, we baptize people in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the creator, redeemer, sustainer. And you know, so we talk about the creation, we pour the water of creation and talk about that. We light the light of Christ talking about the light in the world. And then we have the oil and the little dove to talk about the Holy Spirit. Um, and then we actually take a baby doll from a little basket that we have in the story. And I do the, I say the words that the priest would normally say over uh, the baby. And uh, then we pass around uh, candles because that's part of it too. It, the child receives their light. And so when I do this with the parents of the soon to be baptized, we have, uh, they each have a candle and we talk about their light in the world and how all this light comes from the one light of, of Jesus. Um, it's it's you know, a beautiful story. My favorite part of that is when we put out the lights, you say, and remember, we're not making these lights go away. We're transforming these lights into smoke. Right. Uh, right. Which because I we do that, that every line for my sermon last week, if anybody was paying attention. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Well, they didn't, uh, you know, that's part of what we do every Sunday in Godly Play. At the mm -hmm. end, we have our Christ candle, and when we light it, the teachers basically say something similar to, you know, when we look at this flame, we can see that it's in one place at one time, just like when Jesus walked on the earth in his body, he could only be in one place at one time. And then we use the snuffer, and we say, we're not blowing out the light, we're changing it. And when we change it to the smoke, it's reminding us that now Jesus can be in all places at all times. So we do that with our own light, too, to remind us of our light spreading out into the it, world. You know, it doesn't matter how many times I've been in that room when you tell the story with our baptismal families. I feel like I get something out of it different, and it speaks to me in a different way every time I hear it. And I know you've done this with our Godly Play Big Stories. And but in that kind of more intimate moment with your families who are going through this, this sacrament, how have you seen them kind of respond and, and this story affect them? Uh, I'd love to hear your perspective on that. Oh, just, uh, I can see it on their faces even, you know, and of course, certainly afterwards, they'll tell me, they said, wow, you know, that was, that was really moving or, um, 
I, I, I can just, I can see it on their faces that the, the power of the words, like when we do the little oil, even on the baby doll and say, you are marked as Christ's own forever. You know, they're such powerful words. In some ways, I think, you know, that morning of the baptism, it can be, it can be hectic. There's lots of things going on. I mean, back when we were having baptisms in the church with the full congregation there. Right, those and, days. And so it can be a blur. And I remember the baptism of my own children. It, it was very much a blur. And I love that they get this moment on Saturday where they kind of go through those, those really impactful moments of the liturgy that are, that are charged with deep emotion about God's relationship with us and our relationship with God, that, that it's in a, almost a more contemplative fashion. I think it helps kind of stick with folks a lot. So it's a great- well, and They get a little book at the end too. I usually give them a, a small book that uh, child, you know, basically meant for a child probably in a three to five-year-old age range, but something that they can share with their children as they're beginning to grow about their baptism and it reflects back on the lesson. Um, but no, I've gotten nothing but positive feedback, but I, I love just to look around the circle at their faces when they're holding the, the candles and the lights. I mean, the story has its own power. You, you know, you're, you're right. The story really does have its own power. I mean, stories have this very transformative effect. And so, and baptism really is one of those stories of our faith and a story that we can point back to and and in a story that does that does change us. And that's, I mean, that's really a lot of what Godly plays about. It's about the power of, of stories to change us. Right, it, it, it's, it so much is, and you know, it, it changed me. I mean, you know, I, I grew up in the Baptist church, you know, so I knew my Bible, but I never had this kind of connection to the story as I have when I learned this method with Godly play, using all the senses that we use to tell the story, auditory, visual, and aesthetic because they get to work with it. And, and you know, I, I love that we're talking about this because it leads directly to the question we're talking about is, will you proclaim uh, the good news? Will, will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? And, and so often when we think about proclaiming in word and example, we think about going out and doing something. We don't often think about proclaiming it in all of our senses and our taste and our smells and in and, and our audience, mm -hmm. which is kind of what the godly play stories begin uh -huh. to, to get at is that the good news is for all of our senses. Right, right. And that, uh, and that when we hear these stories again and again through the years, you know, once they, they don't hear the creation story just one time, you know, they'll hear it maybe every other year or whatever. And uh, it's beautiful to be able to say, you know, when they say, oh, oh, I know this one. I say, yes, you heard it two years ago and you're a whole different person now you're going to be amazed at what you can hear differently now well, yeah the, the stories change as we change and grow and mature and you know the and, and that's why you know the proclamation of the good news of christ is is one thing but it's also a whole bunch of things <laughs> um it's not just one way and, and one thing um and i think about the good news that y'all proclaim every day over the course of a year shaping our children into people of faith um so well and even stories that are uh secular you know but during the summer we've had some time to be trying to be creative and do some other things with this facebook thing um there's so many secular stories with really a great message and uh i just wanted to share there was one it was called the suitcase and it was a beautifully told story but it was about a little boy who's packing a suitcase for the kingdom of heaven what he's taking with him. And of course he's taking some things uh, that he thinks he's gonna need to help people. you know. So he's talking about the different things that he would put in the suitcase. And so I asked them, this was on Zoom, you know, uh, I sent home a little PDF with the parents with the shape of a suitcase and you know, what would you put in it? You can draw it, you can write words, whatever. And I had, I had great responses, so many different ones, but uh, to show you how the depth of how children understand this, I had one child who said, I would pack a cross and a flashlight and I could hold the cross up. And when I shine the flashlight on it, everything dark behind it, I can remember it is behind me and all the light ahead of me. Mm. That's, that's what's ahead in the future, you know? And I mean, I, I'm stunned, you know, when I hear those things, it's like, wow. Well, I mean, I, I think a lot of times there's this, perception that when we do formation with with our younger members it's uh it's about filling an empty vessel 
And that's not mm. the case at all, because it's not just you and your teachers proclaiming the good news to these, to our younger, younger members. It's them proclaiming it right back to you. Um, Absolutely. And the beautiful part about this uh, program, too, is that once you've told the story and you got those, you ask these wondering questions, you get to wonder, too, as an adult, and you don't have to have the answers. So when the children ask you uh, a, a certain question, you know, and you're stumped, you can also say, you know, I don't know that, you know, that's a that's a great question. Or people have asked that questions for for thousands of years. And let's explore great. Together. It's a good question of faith, isn't it? I mean, it's a great response of faith to say, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> um, and that's one of the things I'd love for parents to really get from if, if I were in a formation class is to tell them that don't, I, I think some parents are afraid they don't know enough about the Bible or whatever, you know, to do this. That can be the beauty of it, you know, explore it together, have that curiosity together with your child about I don't know about that story. Let's see if we can find that story. Yeah, what this baptismal promise isn't proclaim the answers to all of life's problems. Mm -hmm. It's not to proclaim the, the answers. It's to proclaim the good news. And, and sometimes we don't understand all about the good news. Sometimes we can't wrap our heads around it. And, and in a way, that's good, because if we could, it, there would be nothing mysterious left in it. And I would hate exactly. to get to the bottom of the mystery of God. That would, that would very much shrink God to something... Uh, less than actually God is. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So that's the kind of the beauty of it. And I you know, tell the teachers when I work with them too, is, uh, if we have the answers, then this word that we're proclaiming doesn't grow anymore. I mean, you know, we, we want it to keep questioning and growing and looking and seeking. I've always thought that was interesting in the Jewish faith, this uh, midrash or, you know, where they yeah. really go dive deep and try to, you know, and, and it's, and it's, good to argue yeah sometimes i think we're afraid to argue they're good to argue i love to think that our, our our proclamation of the good news is something that's not just something we do once and we're done but it's something we do and that continues to grow and it continues mm -hmm. to develop and it continues to change you know once we kind of put something out there as people take it in and and mold it into their own lives and and graft mm -hmm. it into their own lives it it changes and exponentially grows um, in so many ways. Um, so yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm curious, you know, and, and all, how, how long have you been doing godly play? How long have you been doing children's formation? Uh, this 20 years. So you've been here 20 years and you know, it's, it's such a wonderful gift to have staff who have, who know a place like, uh, so many of our staff know this place. It's really wonderful. Um, over your 20 years, um, I would love to hear some stories, some thoughts and reflections about how you've seen our kids proclaim the good news in word and example of, uh, of God in Christ. Oh my God. Well, you know, because I've been here so long, you know, I can actually say that I was a Sunday school teacher of Jared Grant. Oh. <laughs> who is now, Who's now a priest. There's a big story. There's a success story. <laughs> uh, I'm teasing, but, but. It's uh, all for you. We know, we know it's all it, it, it was me. <laughs> But it, it is interesting, though, that I could see from the get-go, and Debbie and Sharon and I would talk about this, too, we could see that whatever it is about church, too, this atmosphere was really resonating, for him, that there was something, there was, uh, not that it was any deeper, but it was just something, this was, this was going to be the place for him, we could, we could kind of feel that, um, but I've seen it with so many of my children, um, who've gone on to do things. I especially get to see that as I go forward with Debbie and I see how they get involved with EYC and how they step up with other things in the church. But, uh, you know, even the ones that I'll hear about later that are starting to question and saying, well, I don't know if I believe in any of this or not. You know, I, I don't count that as failure, you know? They have, at least they've heard something and they have something to bounce things off of. It's not just, well, let's just see what they can find out in their life. You know, we give them this background, this story of a particular kind of faith um, uh, that holds with it the truths that all the, that most all faith, the faith traditions have about love and God. I mean, you know, you and I both grew up in the evangelical church because we, we know that old line that the, the, the word of God doesn't return void, <laughs> doesn't return empty. In, right. In 
the imagination. So, I mean, we do trust that when we proclaim that word, it does make a difference. When we proclaim that good news, it does make a difference. No matter what path a person chooses to take in their lives, proclaiming love in somebody's life, I think does make a difference. To proclaim to someone that you're loved no matter what does make a difference. <laughs> And that God loves you no matter what, what you know, and whether or not you love God or, or you believe in God, God loves you and believes in you. Right, right, matter. right, right. And uh, so, uh, you know, and, and I see it even with the children that I have now, I can see it in just how they respond to one another, uh, how they're trying to make sense of the world. Um, and that's another thing that I think coming to, to church or godly play gives children a language mm. to it's like I remember being, I was so proud of some of the children that one day when I guess Father Scott had them forward or something, maybe it was Bishop of Meyer, I can't remember, but he asked them if they knew what a prophet was. And one of them used the language you're using. God. This. And, oh, a prophet is someone who comes so close to God and God comes so close to them that they know what God wants them to do. And it was like, yeah, <laughs> I mean, they, you know, not that you have to have those words, but they words for it yeah and it's such a wonderful way to describe what a prophet does you know it it's 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 wonderful to watch even my kids begin to have some of that 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 language uh mm -hmm. coming into their lives you know when they were going through the godly play program um i love the questions that i get asked when i've done the communion classes um, oh, yeah. uh, some of them are, so, some of them are profound and some of them are hilarious and I love the hilarious ones as much as I love the profound ones um because I do remember one I was asked um I said does anybody have any questions about this thing that we do every Sunday somebody goes yeah why do we let kids drink alcohol <laughs> oh oh I've forgotten that one <laughs> I thought huh, talk about a question that stumps you like how do you respond to that because you know anything I you wonder Father David said uh would not be good um yeah but well, so, you could always say, I wonder. I wonder, yes, I wonder why. I wonder why. I wonder, I wonder why. why we do. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, you know, part of your ministry isn't just to the, the, the kids of our peers, the students of our peers. It's also to our, our teachers and, and our families. And, and as, as you minister there, how, how do you see Trinity proclaiming the good news to our families and, and, and helping them proclaim that good news in their own lives, in their own family lives? I, I'll often tell uh, families that, you know, you are your child's primary faith formation leader, and you don't have to know everything, but mm -hmm. they, they take cues from you. You know, if it's important to you, it's important to them. So how does that mm -hmm. formation from that end seem to kind of, whether it be with your teachers or, or your parents, how do you see that proclamation of the good news? Well, probably in some different ways, but one way I know that uh, I always do hear parents asking me for ways to, uh, like, go into ad Advent with their child or to go into Lent, you know, with their child. So that's one of the things I always want to try to create are some, uh, some at-home things that they can do that are simple, that aren't too time-consuming, but have a symbolic nature to them and, and a visual nature, things that are tactile, things that children, you know, get. And, you know, and, and one of them's coming up, we're, we're, you're doing this for Advent, right? Yes, in fact, we're getting ready to start something called Advent in a Box. <laughs> and yes, you're going to get a box in the mail, and it'll be filled with the stuff to make your Advent wreath, along with, you know, the little... This is the, this is the beloved thing that we always used to do on the first yeah. day of Advent. But we can't gather to do it now, so the only thing that's not in there is the greens. We won't send you the greenery. You have to do that. But the Advent wreath stuff is in there with the devotional, but then there's going to be also in there... So you'll take that out. The box is now empty. There's a reverse advent calendar. I like that word, reverse advent. So instead of, you know, how you have those little chocolate things where people open it up and you get something each day of advent. Well, instead, you're My, doing I have a coffee advent calendar for this year. So, you know. Oh, you do? <laughs> I love it. Uh, so this is going to be where you put something in every day of advent and it's going to our ministry that's housed here at Trinity, the Church of the Advocate, our ministry for homeless and marginalized folks. So different small items that, you know, are needed for our, our, our homeless siblings. In, like one day might say hand warmers, one day might say a pencil, one day might say small notebook, one day might say yes, that, 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 There you go. There's a proclamation of the good news of God and Christ 
an example. And indeed, you know, this mm-hmm. is indeed that our children and our family are going to be doing every day. And then at the end, they're going to have a 20, you know, a 20 odd day proclamation of the good news. Right. That they're going to bring back. So then once that box is filled, obviously we're not going to wait all the way to Christmas, but on that s- Sunday, December 20th, we're asking the families to bring them all in. Um, and then we will have uh, all these wonderful things to share with uh, the folks from Church of the Advocate. And, uh, you know, I, I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a very tangible way and a way for our kids to give back. Because I think our kids, we are blessed. Most of the kids that come to our church are blessed with a roof over their head and plenty of food to eat and toys for Christmas and that kind of thing. So here's a chance to... You know, as, as we begin to kind of wrap, wrap things up, I, I, I'm thinking that, you know, as Episcopalians, evangelism is not something that we kind of um, think of as our strong suit. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, you know, proclaiming the good news of God and Christ in word and example might be a little unnerving because, you know, the image that comes to mind is, you know, the street preacher out on the corner with the sandwich bowl right. shouting that the end is near. But, you know, it is right. 2020, maybe it is. I don't know. Um, yeah. But... What I love about this conversation is it's recast this idea of proclaiming the good news of God and Christ and word and example through the lens of story and, and our story and, and sharing and telling our story, not just the stories of the scripture, but also our own stories as a family and, and becoming those stories of the good news. And, and I love that idea of the good news as, as that shared story, that shared um, story that we're continuing to tell. Um, and you actually said that you, you have you have something on stories that you refer to a lot that kind of resonates with back yeah. and, and the transfer. I wonder if you could share that with us as a way of closing us out. Sure. This is something I often read to the teachers when we have our workshops and we're getting ready for the year. <clears throat> it just spoke to me. It's, it's uh, by Rumi, that ancient poet that uh, has some wonderful things. But uh, this one is about story and. I just think it captures it beautifully. It says, a story is like water that you heat for your bath. It takes messages between the fire and your skin. It lets them meet and it cleans you. Very few can sit down in the middle of the fire itself like a salamander or Abraham. We need intermediaries. A feeling of fullness comes, but usually it takes some bread to bring it. Beauty surrounds us, but usually we need to be walking in a garden to know it. The body itself is a screen to shield and partially reveal the light that's blazing inside your presence. Water, stories, the body, all the things we do are mediums that hide and show what's hidden. Study them and enjoy this being washed with the secret we sometimes know and then not. Mm. What a wonderful way to end. What a wonderful way to kind of launch us into the week. Uh, thank you, Beth, for being with us, for sharing with us about uh, our ministry amongst our kids and families, and for sharing your wisdom with us. Thank you so much. It was my pleasure to be here today, David. Thank you. Well, we'll see y'all next week. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Bye.